Hello and welcome back to this video series on setting up my metadata driven processing framework for Azure Data Factory from scratch in your environment. In this video, we are going to look at getting our service keys and adding them to Azure Key Vault ready for things to start interacting with each other. So, you recall in the last video, we'd worked through the first four steps of the deployment steps listed in the markdown of the solution. We're now going to focus on steps five, six, and seven, granting access to Data Factory in Key Vault, getting the function app default key and putting that in Key Vault as a secret, and also adding the SQL DB connection string to Key Vault. So let's do number five first. So in my Azure portal, I've got all of my services that I deployed in the last video. And what we're firstly going to do is go into Key Vault and under Access Policies, there's myself that's already been added by default. I'm going to add a new access policy allowing a new service principle to access the keys, secrets, and certificates. And then what we're going to do is from here, we're just going to search for the service principle of the data factory that's been deployed. So when you deploy an Azure service, it automatically gets its own service principle or its own managed identity. So selecting that and then adding data factory there as the act to the access policies and remember to hit save at this point to actually commit those changes. So this means now that data factory can access any content that's in the Azure key vault. So that deals with number five. Next number four, we want to get the app key for our functions. So I'm just going to go back to my dashboard. I'm going to go to my functions and I'm going to go to app keys and then all I'm going to do is copy the well, let's show it as well actually just let's ah, I thought we could copy from this screen but apparently we can't what I'm going to do is I'm just going to then cheat and use the classic functions blades instead, because I know from there we can show that key and we can copy it. It's annoying that we can't actually copy that from the new portal blades, but hey ho, hopefully this still exists by the time you watch this video. Um, anyway, so I've copied my functions app default key. I then want to go back to Key Vault and in my secrets, I'm just going to manually add a new value. Functions default key, let's paste in the secret value. I don't mind you seeing that in the video because this is a vanilla tenant, tenant that's going to be uh, trashed once this video series is over. So that's the functions default key added. So that deals with part six. Next up, part seven, my Azure SQL DB connection string. So the easiest way to do this that I found is if you go to the Azure SQL DB, you go to connection strings, and basically it will then give you a template of the connection string that you need. It'll even add in the, uh, the user ID for you as well. So I'm just going to copy that and then let's break out notepad and what I'm going to do is the password that I deployed that I used when I deployed my SQL DB I'm just going to drop that into here again I really don't mind you knowing this because it's only going to last for a few days anyway so that I can copy that entire connection string. And now that's what I'm going to add to my key vault as another secret. SQL DB connection string. 
I'm sure you've got a very good naming convention for your key vaults already, but I'm obviously just being very descriptive of what I'm doing. So that's the SQL DB connection string added, and that covers off point number seven in the deployment steps. If you want to use a, a different SQL authentication user account, you know, by all means, you want to be a bit more granular with your security, then you can go ahead and do that. Um, you could also, if you like, just grant your data factory access using that same managed service identity that I use when I grant a data factory access to Key Vault. So you can use that same MSI to access your SQL DB as well if you want. I'm just cheating by using a, a SQL authenticated key and cheating because I'm using the, the admin account that I created when I deployed it. Of course, your security would be much better than that, but I'm just showing you how to get this set up and started. So that concludes this video. I've um, got those bits and pieces that I need and I've added them now to my key vault. So we're, we're ready to start publishing things next. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you can join me again soon.